Somebody once said to me that the key to Jesus' heart is Our Lady. Like, because nobody loves or knows a son as much as the mother. You see it in nature, a mother will do anything for her children. And I think that's the same as the Blessed Virgin. Some people encounter Mary to help them get to God, you know. And I think I was one of those. The first night I was prayed over, I actually felt a great warmth going through me and I felt like there was a great light over me as well. The one person that I knew I could trust was my mum. And she just looked me right in the eye and she said to me, Neil, you've got to start to pray. You've got to ask God to help you, otherwise I can see that you're dying. The May procession to the Grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes was one of the largest since the shrine was opened 11 years ago. Children figured largely in this ceremony, and some of them found it a little difficult to keep step. In Ireland, devotion to Mary and May processions have been popular since before famine times. In 1932, this devotion was at its height. In the same year, Pope Pius XI declared the Blessed Virgin Queen of Ireland. You might think that this type of Marian devotion is a thing of the past, but in the month of May, we found pockets of devotion to the Blessed Virgin all over the country. People think that the faith in Ireland is, is, is gone or weak. It's not. There are wonderful people in Ireland that have great faith, and wonderful faith in Our Lady as their mother. You know, as a friend of mine said one time, Our Lady is a friend that never fails, and it's true. She's always there to help, and she'll always work everything out. I belong to the Fatima Apostolate, which I started in Drogheda way back in 1972. The troubles in the north were on at the time, and we started to have two processions a year, one in uh, February and another one in um, October. And then we decided to have just one on May Day, the 1st of May, in honour of Our Lady and St. Joseph the Worker. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady of Fatima is our statue here today and this particular statue it was hand carved in Fatima and the, the Fatima Novena starts on the 5th of May for nine days and then there's a procession on the final Sunday and our, that statue goes down to St. Peter's Church. We let her go, you know, even though we hate letting her go, which she's, she's always out doing things, you know, helping people. The fact that today is Divine Mercy Sunday, the beatification of John Paul II, and that he had such tremendous devotion to Our Lady of Fatima, that's putting everything together like. I think the parents of yesteryear were very, very religious. No matter what the priests or the nuns or whatever said, that was law. I was born in the, in the back room the last of 15. There was nine boys sleeping in, in the one room. And can you imagine them? You know, you and uh, big fellas, you know the somebody, but they were huge. My mother decided in the Marian year of 1954, I think it was, that they would get a statue built. Well, my mother and father had to go to the Dublin Corporation and get planning permission to erect it. They wanted to put it in the middle so it would be seen from the, the top of the street but they wouldn't allow it. But my mother and all her friends used to sit down outside the door and have a chat about everything to get it erected and how to get it erected. And they, they, they erected it after a lot of hassle and problems, but they done it. And then there was great celebrations when it was done. All the buntings and flags, and there was loads and loads of people coming around for the celebration of it. This street was full. It's a mother figure. She's a dominant part of, the, of life. She's the dominant part of the house, and she had you. She, she born you. I think that's what it is, the devotion to, to a blessed lady. It's just the fascination with a mother.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for us and us men at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. We have the uh, rosary every Thursday at 8 o'clock, and the lights are switched on by uh, Mr. Ingle. He's a good man. And, uh, and that's the way it goes. It doesn't matter whether it's winter or summer. It, it's there every Thursday at 8 o'clock. Tony, were you here at the time the statue broke? I was, yeah. And they fixed it. Yeah. Uh, the daughter came down to say a prayer and uh, she thought she'd seen it shaking a bit. So I asked to say, that's all, all the talk about moving statues. Yeah. So any houses, I, I'll go down and have a look. I went up the steps and I just barely moved it down the hole. I came about in ten pieces, fell, broken. So I put all the, the parts in the, in the back of the car and brought them up and had a shed in the back and I strengthened it up and made it a, a secure inside and that's it's there ever since. When you're going to do this again, uh, please God it won't be a major, it'll be just a painting job and you'll last another hundred years. <laughs> Last night there was two children come down and I was gassed to look at them and they were looking at the statue and blessing themselves and this and I seen them and I went in and turned on the light and you could see the shock on them, you know. The lights <laughs> the light has lit up and you were you know you could see the, the awe in their in their in their faces. Come on. Come on. Come on. At Christmas time and into the new year, I will never not turn the lights on and even if I'm going out for a New Year's party that light is on from early and it will be on all night you know because it's sort of part of the old is gone and you're bringing in the new I want to make him go to sleep just put their head under the wing you can it's a great source of protection really having something like that down here but no, I don't think there's been any special favours on like that. But I think it's a great uh, added attraction to the street. I think it's a very lucky street. Take them away, take them away, Lord. Take away these chains from me. My heart is broken because my spirit's not free. Lord, take away these chains from me. Annette Flynn, a young woman from Westport, has a special devotion to the Blessed Virgin. Annette is an artist and founder of a charity called Mary of the Roses. Her dream is to build a retreat centre for people who need spiritual healing. I started going to a prayer group in Ballantober Abbey. It was about receiving God's gifts. And uh, the first night I was prayed over, I actually, this, the word for it, going out in the spirit, I went out in the spirit. Uh, from there, the man that was actually running the Life and Spirit Seminar said to me that some, God has something. He's calling you to something or he's giving you something to do. And I was delighted. I thought this was great. <laughs> so I just felt in my heart that God was saying to me that just to, you know, talk to people about God's love and to share what I have with them. Besides running a prayer group, Annette also spends her time refurbishing Marian shrines around the country. And when I'm painting Mary, I would always start with saying the Hail Mary. And then I just feel peace. I just feel great peace and joy when I'm painting a Mary statue. I love art anyway so it's, uh, it's my own I suppose creative uh, ability within me that I like to use and when I'm doing it I'm happy but when I'm doing a religious statue I'm even happier When I was younger I would have stayed in my grandmother's house and uh, her and my grandfather had great devotion to Our Lady and to God as well. And it was from there, you know, just being in their house, seeing statues and pictures and all that sort of thing. That And, and I was used to hearing about Mary. That's just the way it was. I thought it was okay. <laughs> it's normal to, to uh, believe in Mary. And um, I suppose then 
when I got into my teenage years, I suppose, hormones and everything else, I uh, went away from God and Our Lady. But it was just my own insecurities and it was just the type of child I was. When I came back then, I probably got it a hundredfold because I was honest and I was saying to Mary and to God, I'm back again and I, and I, you know, I really need you, you know. When I came back to Mary, it was through the memorary, you know, the prayer memorary. And when I would say that, and I felt as if um, Our Lady was beside me and she was giving me that comfort and consolation that I needed. I oh, remember, O oh, most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thy intercession was left unaided. From that moment I was started saying the memorary, I had felt like I had a calling. I didn't know what to do, didn't know how to run a prayer group, but I just felt a very strong feeling inside me that I had to do it. Mm -hmm. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. When people come to the prayer group, I notice hearts, I suppose. You know, if people are broken or distressed or depressed or, you know, that there's something going on in their lives. You know, or sometimes they just need to talk. So, uh, at time. Children figured largely in this ceremony, and some of them found it a little difficult to keep step. In Ireland, devotion to Mary and May processions have been popular since before famine times. In 1932, this devotion was at its height. In the same year, Pope Pius XI declared the Blessed Virgin Queen of Ireland. You might think that this type of Marian devotion is a thing of the past, but in the month of May, we found pockets of devotion to the Blessed Virgin all over the country. People think that the faith in Ireland is, is, is gone or weak. It's not. There are wonderful people in Ireland that have great faith. And wonderful faith in Our Lady as their mother. You know, as a friend of mine said one time, Our Lady is a friend that never fails. The first night I was prayed over, I actually felt a great warmth going through me and I felt like it, there was a great light over me as well. The one person that I knew I could trust was my mum. And she just looked me right in the eye and she said to me, Neil, you've got to start to pray. You've got to ask God to help you, otherwise I can see that you're dying. procession to the Grotto of Our Lady of Lourdes was one of the largest since the shrine was opened 11 years ago. Somebody once said to me that the key to Jesus' heart is Our Lady, like, because nobody loves or knows a son as much as the mother. You see it in nature, a mother will do anything for her children, and I think that's the same as the Blessed Virgin. Some people encounter Mary to help them get to God, you know. And I think I was one of those. 